Ladies and gentlemen, if you are enjoying my videos, please click the like button. It is the only way the YouTube algorithm really notices me. I would be very grateful to you. The body is alive, but not quite. Scary story published by Scare Fiction. Read for you by Scare Fiction. Chapter 1. The Frozen Valley. The wind howled like a banshee outside, clawing at the weathered wooden slats of Adam Wright's cabin. Inside, a lone figure huddled by the crackling fireplace, a mug of lukewarm coffee warming his frost-bitten hands. Adam, his face etched with lines deeper than his 38 years, stared intently at the dancing flames. Their flickering light cast long, skeletal shadows across the room, a stark reminder of the solitude he craved, the isolation he'd sought after the war. The war. The word itself tasted like ashes in his mouth, leaving a bitter aftertaste of screams and smoke. Images, vivid and unwelcome, flickered behind his closed eyelids the chaos of the battlefield, the stench of death clinging to his clothes for weeks after. He'd left that life behind, seeking solace in the quiet embrace of the mountains. This remote cabin, nestled deep within the sprawling boundaries of Glacier National Park, had become his sanctuary. Here, the only sounds were the wind's mournful cry and the occasional rustle of small animals in the undergrowth. Here, the only reminders of the world he left behind were the news snippets he gleaned from his solar-powered radio, a faint, crackly connection to the chaos he'd sworn to escape. His self-imposed exile was broken by the monotonous drone of the approaching snowmobile. A frown creased Adam's brow. Supply deliveries were rare. Most stores wouldn't risk the treacherous mountain roads during the harsh winter. He grabbed his worn leather jacket and a heavy-duty flashlight, stepping out into the biting cold. The snowmobile was parked a few yards from the cabin, its engine sputtering in protest. A young woman, bundled in a bright orange ski jacket that stood out starkly against the white landscape, stood beside it. Her breath formed white puffs in the frigid air and worry etched lines on her usually cheerful face. Sarah, Adam called out, recognizing the ranger stationed at the park entrance. She had stopped by once before, a few months back, just to make sure he hadn't become another mountain hermit lost in his own head. Adam, Sarah replied, relief coloring her voice. Thank goodness I found you. The weather's taking a turn for the worse. Blizzard's expected to hit by nightfall. Figured you could use some extra supplies. Gratitude warred with a flicker of annoyance. He appreciated Sarah's concern, but part of him resented the intrusion on his carefully crafted solitude. Appreciate it, he mumbled, taking the bag she offered. Supplies will be welcome. Sarah lingered for a moment, her eyes scanning the area. Anything else? Been any unusual activity up here lately? Adam understood her concern. Mountain lions were a common threat, and the occasional lost hiker could become disoriented in the harsh winter storms. He shook his head. Just the usual, he said, forcing a smile. Wind? Snow? Maybe a curious fox sneaking around. Nothing out of the ordinary. He didn't mention the unsettling dream he'd had the night before. A vision of a young woman with lifeless eyes lying broken amid the snowdrifts. Superstition. He dismissed it. A product of the isolation gnawing at the edges of his sanity. As Sarah steered her snowmobile away, leaving behind a trail of fading blue exhaust, a sense of foreboding settled over Adam. He couldn't shake the feeling that something had changed, that the harsh beauty of his sanctuary now concealed a hidden darkness. He turned back to his cabin, the weight of the bag in his hand suddenly feeling heavier. Little did he know, his carefully constructed solitude was about to be shattered by a discovery that would forever alter the course of his life. Chapter 2. A Flicker of Life a gnawing unease lingered as Adam closed the cabin door behind him. 
Sarah's question about unusual activity echoed in his mind. He set the bag of supplies down with a thud, the sound jarring in the sudden silence. His gaze drifted back to the body he'd just dragged inside. Emily Peterson, the missing hiker from Sarah's report. He'd recognized her from the faded photo Sarah had shown him. Now, she lay sprawled on the worn rug, her limbs contorted at unnatural angles. Pale moonlight streamed through the window, casting an eerie glow on her frozen features. He knelt beside her, the back of his hand brushing against her icy cheek. He should check for a pulse, call for help. Logic screamed at him, urging him to contact the rangers, let them deal with the gruesome discovery. But a strange reluctance held him back. The impossible dream from the night before surfaced again, the image of Emily's lifeless eyes superimposed on the cold reality before him. He leaned in closer, scrutinizing her face. Her skin, a deathly pallor, felt stiff and unyielding under his touch. Yet there was something unsettlingly different about how the moonlight glinted off her pupils. They seemed to hold a faint, unnatural luminescence. Suddenly, a barely audible gasp ripped through the silence. Adam jolted back, his heart hammering in his chest. He stared, incredulous, as Emily's chest gave a faint, involuntary heave. It wasn't a normal breath, but a shuddering, spasmodic movement. He scrambled back, adrenaline surging. Medical training years past kicked in. He ripped open her jacket, searching for any sign of life. No pulse. Her skin remained frigid, devoid of warmth. Yet, the erratic tremors continued, accompanied by a low, guttural moan that emanated from deep within her throat. The sound was inhuman, devoid of any recognizable emotion. It chilled him to the bone, a primal fear gnawing at his insides. This wasn't a survivor clinging to life. This, something else. A horrifying hybrid, caught between death and a grotesque parody of existence. His mind raced with possibilities. An avalanche had triggered a head injury? Some bizarre medical condition he'd never encountered? Irrational explanations crumbled under the weight of the impossible, the unnatural glow of her eyes, the tremors defying the stillness of death. He stood there, the silence broken only by Emily's tortured moans and his own ragged breathing. An icy wind howled outside, but the real chill emanated from the lifeless body on the floor. Leaving her out there to die in the blizzard wasn't an option. Leaving her here felt like inviting a nightmare into his carefully constructed sanctuary. Faced with this impossible choice, Adam's military training clashed with a sliver of empathy. He couldn't stand by and watch her become another nameless victim of the mountain. With a deep breath, he grabbed a spare blanket and bundled Emily's unnaturally rigid form into it. As he lifted her, a sickening groan escaped her lips. The weight felt unnatural, a chilling combination of lifeless flesh and a disturbingly strong undercurrent of resistance. He carried her to the worn cot in the corner his mind grappling with the horrifying reality that unfolded before him. Had he just condemned himself to share his isolated haven with a monster born from the frozen wilderness? As he laid Emily down, the faint glow in her eyes seemed to intensify, sending a fresh wave of terror coursing through him. He was trapped, alone in the mountains, with a ticking time bomb that defied all rational explanation. Chapter 3 the monstrous transformation. The cabin walls seemed to shrink in on Adam as he stared at the grotesque tableau before him. Emily's body writhed on the cot, her limbs jerking uncontrollably. The once pale skin now flushed with an unhealthy crimson marred by patches of a sickly green. Groans, guttural and inhuman, erupted from her throat, punctuated by a series of wet, rasping coughs. Fear, cold, and metallic, gripped Adam's insides. This was beyond anything he'd witnessed in his time serving overseas, beyond the realm of human suffering. 
Was it some bizarre medical phenomenon? A twisted mutation triggered by the harsh mountain elements? Or something more sinister? A malevolent force taking hold of a lifeless body? He backed away, his gaze darting around the room, searching for some kind of weapon, anything that could defend him against this grotesque parody of a human being. But what use was a hunting knife against something that defied death itself? Driven by a desperate need to understand, Adam cautiously approached the cot. Emily's head snapped towards him, her vacant eyes with their unnatural luminescence locking on his face. A raw, primal terror flickered within those depths, a fear that mirrored his own. The realization hit him with a sickening thud. Maybe she wasn't entirely gone. Maybe some sliver of consciousness, trapped within the decaying shell, was experiencing the same horrifying transformation. He knelt beside her, his voice barely a whisper. Emily, can you hear me? Only the guttural groans answered back. It was a long shot, but he had to try. He needed to know where she'd been, what had triggered this transformation. Suddenly, a flicker of movement in her pocket caught his eye. Reaching in, he found a crumpled map, its edges singed and marked with strange symbols. Beside it, a small amulet hung on a leather cord, a silver pendant carved with an intricate biohazard symbol. He unfurled the map, the faint light from the window revealing a crudely drawn path leading deeper into the mountain range, culminating in a circled area marked with a single ominous word, facility. A cold dread settled in his stomach. This wasn't some random accident. This map, the amulet, they pointed towards something more orchestrated, something far more terrifying than he could have imagined. As he studied the map, his attention was ripped away by a sickening crack. He looked up to see Emily's arm contorted at an unnatural angle, the bone protruding through pale, stretched skin. A scream tore from her throat, a sound so raw and primal that it sent shivers down his spine. Panic clawed at him. He had to get help, contact the rangers, anyone who could explain what was happening. But the blizzard raged outside, isolating him in this macabre. He scrambled to his feet, a new resolve hardening his features. He wouldn't abandon her, but more importantly, he wouldn't become another victim. He would find answers, unravel the mystery behind this monstrous transformation, and hopefully find a way to stop it before it consumed Emily entirely and perhaps him along with her. As the night deepened, the guttural groans morphed into low, frustrated grunts. A sliver of hope, fragile as a spider web, flickered in Adam's mind. Maybe, just maybe, there was still some humanity buried within that decaying shell. Maybe, together, they could unlock the secrets that had unleashed this nightmare upon them both. Chapter 4 the search for answers. Dawn painted the horizon, a bruised purple, as Adam hunched over the crackling fire, the map Emily possessed clutched in his hand. He barely slept, haunted by the image of her contorted form and the horrifying noises that erupted from her throat throughout the night. But amidst the fear, a flicker of determination burned. He wouldn't let this consume him. He would find answers. The map offered a sliver of hope, a potential explanation for Emily's condition. The cryptic symbol marking the location, a stylized biohazard sign sent shivers down his spine. This wasn't a hiking trail, it was a path leading deep into the heart of some secret operation. He glanced at Emily's form on the cot, covered with a patchwork of blankets he'd scavenged from a dusty storage chest. Her groans had subsided replaced by a shallow, raspy breathing. Was it a sign of improvement or a further descent into whatever monstrosity was taking hold of her? He couldn't risk leaving her alone for long. The storm had abated somewhat, but the mountain remained treacherous. Yet, staying meant waiting for whatever transformation was occurring. 
to reach its horrifying conclusion. Frustration gnawed at him. There was a chance, Sarah. The park ranger could offer some insight. The radio crackled with static, but with a surge of desperate hope, he reached for it. Sarah, this is Adam. Come in, Sarah. His voice sounded hollow in the silence. Static hissed back, then a faint voice broke through. Adam, you all right up there? The storm messed up the communication lines pretty bad. He poured out the story in a breathless rush. Emily's lifeless body, the inhuman groans, the map. He expected skepticism, but a sharp intake of breath from the other end surprised him. That area you mentioned, Sarah said, her voice grim. There were rumors years ago. Abandoned research facility. Government shut it down, citing budget cuts, but some folks believe something more sinister was going on. Hope flickered brighter. Do you have any coordinates? Anything that could help me find it? There's an old ranger's log. Mention some locals reported strange lights years back. Doubt the coordinates are accurate after all this time. Look, Adam, that area is dangerous. Maybe we can get a rescue team up there once the weather clears. He knew Sarah was right. But leaving Emily alone was unthinkable. I appreciate it, Sarah, he said, his voice tight. But I have to check this out. If it's the source of whatever's happening to her. The line went dead, leaving him staring at the radio, a grim resolve hardening his features. He packed his backpack with supplies first aid kit, extra blankets, rudimentary climbing gear scavenged from his cabin and a gnawing sense of unease. One glance at Emily's still form confirmed his decision. He left a note by the bed, a desperate plea for her to hold on. Stepping into the biting morning air, the map clutched tightly in his hand. Adam embarked on a perilous journey into the heart of the unknown. The harsh beauty of the mountains was overshadowed by lurking dread. With each step, the line between hope and desperation blurred, and the true horror of his situation unfolded before him. Chapter 5 Whispers of Secrets The wind howled a mournful song as Adam trudged through the snow-laden wilderness. The map, weathered and worn, led him deeper into the heart of the mountain range, towards the circled location marked facility. Each step was a battle against the biting cold and the growing fear gnawing at his insides. Hours bled into what felt like an eternity. Just as doubt began to creep in, a break in the tree line revealed a desolate scene. A cluster of crumbling concrete structures, half buried in snowdrifts, stood like skeletal sentinels against the stark backdrop. This was it, the abandoned research facility. A wave of unease washed over him. Silence hung heavy in the air, broken only by the creak of wind whipping through broken windows. The closer he got, the more the true scale of the operation became apparent. Satellite dishes jutted from rooftops, and strange symbols adorned the crumbling facades. This wasn't a simple research outpost. It was something far grander, something far more unsettling. Cautiously, Adam navigated the treacherous terrain around the buildings. Shattered glass crunched beneath his boots, and the occasional gust of wind sent dust swirling through the skeletal remains of what were once lab windows. One particular building, slightly more intact than the others, caught his eye. Forcing open a rusted metal door, he found himself in a dimly lit hallway. The air hung heavy with the smell of decay and a faint undercurrent of something sterile and antiseptic. He pushed forward, his hand hovering near the flashlight in his pocket. Every room was a chilling tableau, overturned lab benches, broken beakers, and strange contraptions he couldn't even begin to identify. A sense of morbid fascination warred with the growing terror in his gut. Then, tucked away in a side corridor, he found it. A single, 
sealed door with a biohazard symbol emblazoned upon it. His heart pounded in his chest as he wrestled with the rusted handle. With a final groan, the door creaked open, revealing a hidden laboratory. Dust motes danced in the beam of his flashlight, illuminating a sterile room filled with sophisticated-looking equipment. In the center, a metal table held the remnants of a restraining apparatus, its straps hanging loose. His gaze fell upon a single sheet of paper protruding from a console. He grabbed it, his fingers trembling as he unfolded the brittle document. It was a research log, the final entry dated several years back. The words blurred as he read, adrenaline coursing through him. Project Lazarus. Bio-reanimation experiments. Subject 37 failed revival. Unstable condition. The log ended abruptly, offering no answers on how to stabilize the condition or reverse the process. But one thing was clear. Emily wasn't just a random victim of the elements. She was Subject 37, a failed experiment from this hidden research facility. A flicker of hope sparked within him. If they could create this condition, maybe they had a way to reverse it. This lab, with its secrets buried under layers of dust, might hold the key to saving Emily from whatever monstrous transformation was consuming her. As he pocketed the log, a sense of urgency gripped him. He couldn't stay here any longer. He had to get back to Emily to try and use whatever knowledge he'd gleaned to help her. But as he turned to leave, a low, guttural growl echoed through the building, sending a fresh wave of terror coursing through him. He wasn't alone. The secrets of the facility weren't just buried in the past. They were very much alive. Chapter 6. The Monstrous Hunger The image that greeted Adam upon returning to the cabin was enough to turn his stomach. The meager warmth he'd left behind had dissipated, replaced by a bone-chilling cold that seemed to emanate from the figure sprawled on the cot. Emily was gone. In her place lay a grotesque parody of a human being. Patches of pale flesh had given way to a sickly green, pulsing with an unnatural light. Tumors, bulbous and grotesque, erupted from her body, their surfaces glistening with a viscous slime. The inhuman groans that had haunted his journey home had morphed into a constant, high-pitched shriek devoid of any recognizable emotion. Fear, primal and raw, clawed at Adam's throat. He stumbled back, knocking over a chair in his haste. The cabin, once a haven of solitude, now felt like a cage. The flimsy walls, no barrier against the monstrous transformation unfolding before him. Emily's head snapped towards him, her vacant eyes with their unnatural luminescence boring into his. But this time, a flicker of something else flickered within those depths recognition, perhaps or a primal hunger that sent shivers down Adam's spine. The inhuman shrieks intensified, morphing into a series of guttural clicks and growls. The cot creaked ominously as Emily struggled against the restraints he'd fashioned from spare blankets. He knew they wouldn't hold for long. Panic threatened to consume him, but a surge of desperate resolve cut through the fear. He couldn't let her loose, not just for his own safety, but for the sliver of humanity he still believed might be trapped within that decaying shell. He scrambled back, his gaze darting around the room searching for a weapon, anything he could use to defend himself. His eyes landed on the fireplace poker, a heavy iron rod that lay forgotten by the hearth. Grasping it in a sweaty hand, he took a tentative step forward. Emily's shrieks reached a fever pitch, and with a sickening snap, the makeshift restraints tore free. She lunged, a grotesque parody of a human sprint, fueled by a primal hunger that sent a fresh wave of terror through Adam. He barely dodged the gnashing maw that snapped at his head. The air hung heavy with the stench of decay and a cloying sweetness that made his stomach churn. Adrenaline flooded his system, fueling a desperate dance around the confines of the cabin. With a snarl that ripped through the silence, Emily lunged again. This time, 
Adam met her halfway. He swung the poker with all his might, the metal connecting with a sickening thud against her mutated arm. A shriek of pain, raw and feral, erupted from her throat, but the blow seemed to have little effect. The realization slammed into him with the force of a hammer blow. This wasn't a human being he was fighting. It was a monstrous entity, fueled by a primal hunger he couldn't understand. The hope he'd clung to, the belief he could save Emily, began to dwindle. He backed away, the cabin shrinking around him as he desperately searched for an escape route. The window, it was his only chance. But as he lunged towards it, Emily cut him off, her guttural growls morphing into a series of clicks that seemed almost intelligent. A terrifying thought struck him was the entity trapped within Emily evolving, gaining a semblance of reason amidst the monstrous transformation. And if so, what did it want from him? He was trapped, a single figure against a force he couldn't comprehend. The cabin, once a sanctuary, now echoed with the monstrous shrieks that seemed to herald a horrifying new chapter in his fight for survival. Chapter 7. The Desperate Choice Despair threatened to consume Adam as he stared at the grotesque creature that was once Emily. The cabin shook with the force of her inhuman shrieks, a constant reminder of the monstrous evolution raging within her. Yet, amidst the terror, a flicker of determination sparked. The research log from the facility, his only lead offered a glimmer of hope. It wasn't much, just cryptic notes detailing the bio-reanimation project, and a single crucial detail about reversing the process, a rare mountain herb called Winter's Breath. Legend spoke of the herb, a silvery flower rumored to possess potent restorative properties. The log mentioned it grew on a specific, near inaccessible cliff face within a day's journey of the cabin. A desperate plan formed in Adam's mind he would find the herb, recreate the experiment, albeit in a much cruder way, and hopefully reverse the horrifying transformation. The risk was immense. The notes were fragmentary at best, and the process itself seemed unstable. Yet, it was his only shot at saving Emily, or at least saving the sliver of humanity he believed still flickered within her decaying shell. He wasted no time. Grabbing his backpack, he stuffed it with supplies first aid kit, climbing gear, and a makeshift map drawn from the research log's cryptic sketches. A blizzard was brewing outside, the wind howling a mournful song against the cabin walls. Just as he opened the door, a low growl erupted from behind him. Emily, her monstrous form seemingly filling the small cabin, lurched towards him. He slammed the door shut, throwing his weight against it as the creature's inhuman shrieks tore through the flimsy wood. He knew it wouldn't hold for long, but it bought him a precious few moments. He sprinted into the swirling snowstorm, the biting wind clawing at his exposed skin. The treacherous journey to the cliff face would be difficult even in clear weather, but with the blizzard raging, it felt like a suicide mission. Hours bled into what felt like an eternity. The biting cold threatened to numb him, and the sheer white landscape offered no landmarks, making him question his sanity. Just as he was about to give up, a glimmer of silver caught his eye. There, clinging precariously to a rock face, was a cluster of delicate, shimmering flowers. Hope surged through him. He scrambled the last few feet, ignoring the treacherous footing and the ever-present awareness of the storm's fury. With numb fingers, he plucked a few of the silvery flowers, tucking them carefully within his jacket pocket. The journey back was a blur. He stumbled, exhaustion gnawing at him, but the thought of Emily and the potential cure spurred him on. He finally reached the cabin just as darkness began to paint the sky. The door lay in splinters on the floor, and inside, a monstrous scene awaited him. Emily, her mutated form even more grotesque than before, thrashed against the furniture, her inhuman shrieks echoing through the ransacked cabin. Fear threatened to paralyze him, 
but he forced himself forward. He had a choice to make fight the creature fueled by a primal hunger or attempt the unstable cure, a gamble that could save Emily or turn the monstrous transformation irreversible. As Emily lunged, her fetid breath washing over him, Adam raised his hand, the precious flowers clutched tightly in his palm. Was it a fool's hope? A final desperate act of defiance against the impossible situation he faced? He took a deep breath, the choice agonizingly clear. This wasn't just about survival. It was about holding on to a sliver of humanity in the face of an unimaginable horror. He had to try. Chapter 8, The Price of Life. Emily's monstrous form filled the cabin, a grotesque parody of humanity fueled by a primal hunger. Adam raised his hand, the fate of the situation resting on the precious flowers clutched in his palm. He knew the risk. The research notes were cryptic. The cure, a desperate gamble. Fight or heal? The choice hung heavy in the frigid air. In that split second, an image flashed in his mind. Emily's terrified eyes from the dream, the same fear now mirrored in the depths of the monstrous creature before him. Perhaps a sliver of her humanity still clung to life, trapped within the decaying shell. With a deep breath, he lowered his weapon. He lunged across the room, shoving past the creature's gnashing maw. Reaching the makeshift table by the fireplace, he crushed the winter's breath flowers into a paste, tears stinging his eyes. Ignoring the guttural growls that filled the cabin, he smeared the paste on Emily's exposed flesh, the sweet herbal scent, a stark contrast to the cloying stench of decay. Silence, an eerie, unnatural silence descended upon the cabin. Emily's monstrous form trembled, the pulsating green glow flickering erratically. Was it working? Had he defied the impossible? Hope flickered like a dying ember. Then, a gasp. A weak, raspy gasp that echoed through the cabin. He whipped around, bracing himself for the worst. But instead of the monstrous creature, Emily lay on the cot, her body shaking, her skin pale but human. Her eyes, however, were vacant, devoid of any recognition. Emily, he croaked, his voice hoarse with disbelief. A shudder ran through her body, and then, with a flicker of recognition, her eyes focused on him. Tears welled up in her hollow sockets. Adam, she whispered, her voice frail and raw. Relief washed over him, a wave so powerful it nearly brought him to his knees. He had done it. He had saved her. But as the euphoria subsided, a chilling realization dawned on him. The amulet around Emily's neck, the one he'd overlooked in the chaos, now pulsed with an ominous green light. Its intricate biohazard symbol seemed to glow mockingly in the dim light. Was he truly facing a human being or a carefully contained monster? And then a low growl ripped from deep within Emily's throat. Her eyes, the moment ago filled with tearful recognition, now flickered with an unnatural green light. A horrifying thought struck him. Perhaps he hadn't saved Emily. He had simply created a more cunning, more controlled monster. As Emily lunged, a new, chilling strength rippling through her emaciated frame, the amulet around her neck pulsing with a malevolent green glow. Adam knew this was just the beginning. He had brought her back. Yes, but at what cost? The fight for survival was far from over. The true horror, it seemed, had just begun. The experience had left its mark on Adam, a deep psychological scar etched into his soul. The isolation he once craved now felt like a naive dream. He knew he could never return to the man he was before. He had stared into the abyss and the abyss had stared back leaving him forever haunted by the price of life, the weight of his desperate gamble, and the chilling uncertainty of what horrors Emily, or whatever lurked within her, would unleash upon the world.